I promise to share my bi-weekly drill to assure the readiness of my sidearm. I have been unable to find anyone else on the internet that does this. The hows and the whys will be demonstrated after this episode's lecture. I know some of this was covered in part one, but the foundation is critical to this and the following episodes. Your first line of defense is to avoid being in a position to become a victim of an assault. To that end, situational awareness and constant threat assessment is not foolproof. In our lifetimes, society has made many changes. People are now under the impression that they should not be civilized and have no respect for anyone, sometimes not even themselves. Many of our citizens only know how to communicate with hateful rhetoric. Tensions run high and sometimes the mentally impaired lash out. The reason I brought up the gun-free zone threat is that they became the softest of targets. Shopping areas that prohibit qualified citizens from being armed and offer no gun-toting security are fertile grounds for spectacular terroristic shootings, where the actor shoots random targets that may or may not represent an ethnic group. It should come as no surprise that since passing the Gun-Free School Zones Act in 1990, every school shooting has been accomplished in a federally mandated gun-free zone. Shopping center attacks are also most common in gun-free zones. Prohibited citizens follow the law and disarm themselves before entering the locations. Two things. Guns cannot read. And bad actors don't care because they use the advantage. Allen, Texas is such a location that fortunately had an officer on site for an unrelated call. The body camera footage of the officer shows that what looks like an AR-15 is used to neutralize the actor. Whatever grievances these actors have, they expect to be terminated as a result of their attack. As a result of the Uvalde school shooting, the legislature is putting armed resistance in schools, and the mandates are funded by the state. Only time will tell if this tactic works. There are a lot of mentally ill and drug-infused people living on the streets. Their attacks occur usually within 7 to 8 feet of where they are targeted. Stay 20 feet from someone that you feel might be potentially triggered by your presence to reduce the opportunity of being attacked. Next, there are situations outside of your control. Muggers, carjackers, murderers, and rapists. These people find you. So far, I have presented two scenarios. What you can control and events that you are at the mercy of. The remainder of this series will be devoted to dealing with the last group. The thing is getting the attention of someone who can and will help. Sounds easy enough. But the societal changes I mentioned changed people that came a-running at a cry for help now are far less willing these days. Screaming fire instead gets a better response probably because a fire might threaten them more because they cannot see where the fire is at. Fear of the unknown. A demonstration of the alarms follows this lecture. Read the warnings on the packages as to the potential for hearing loss if used. Next, after voice, is a whistle. Nondescript, inexpensive, can get attention, and is often used by children. The personal alarm, advertised at 130 decibels, there are tons of these devices on the market for less than $20 each. Some have flashing lights to draw visual attention to the location of the attack. The final device is closest to an offensive alarm product, a handheld air horn, not as easily concealed as the other two, but may be the most effective in stunning an attacker when hit square in the face with a full blast. The propellant caution is that the eyes must be flushed with water for 15 minutes to clear the irritants. 
This product is advertised as ideal for all sporting events. Though not stated on the package, the consensus of usage is that the device is activated by act aiming it skyward, held above the user's head. I remind you that someone under the influence of fencyclidine, commonly referred to as PCP, also known as angel dust, is an anesthetic that allows the user to focus on rage. They are not sensitive to pain, no matter how excruciating. The alarms alone may not resolve the issue. You may be forced to take a more hands-on approach. Our first subject is a whistle. The number two is the personal alarm. And number three is the air horn. The first three tests are near the camera. The next three tests are 25 feet away. In part three, we will discuss the tools that you can use to give your an attacker a reason to leave you alone. Your kind attention so far has been greatly appreciated. And as promised, I will give you my everyday carry weapon drill that I use religiously. The idea of this drill came to me while COVID was on our plate. Ammunition in short supply. The cost of going to the range was between 80 and $100 a pop. Day in, and day out, I just slid my sidearm into the holster and headed out the door. Uncertain of my preparedness, this solution came to me. I feel much safer after using it. Obviously, this is for a semi-automatic. I will be doing one for revolvers in the near future. Meet my sidearm. I don't leave home without it. This 1911 Fastback was made by Sig Sauer. The model's name is Nightmare. A commander-sized semi-auto loading firearm chambered in 45 ACP. Notice the curved mainspring housing. This makes the gun print less than a standard 1911. As I hip carry using a cover garment, this feature is priceless. This weapon is configured for a right-hand user. I can already hear the old and slow comments from the 9mm crowd. The reason for the 45 caliber is that the Moro tribe in the Philippine-American War were highly motivated and used drugs to inhibit the sensation of pain. PCP, anyone? Then, the standard army issue was the 38 long Colt revolver and it just wasn't getting the job done. The 1911 became the standard issue in the U.S. Armed Forces from 1911 to 1985. All right, so now to give you a little bit of background. I used to have nightmares about this stuff. This gun is empty. This is for the demonstration purposes of my greatest fear. So, I made all the preparation, I pulled my sidearm, I am prepared to use it. And I go to pull the trigger, and I get this. Or I get this. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom! So, this is my everyday carry. I use this one to guide, guard my life and guard that of my families. So, 
So our first step is to put it in a safe direction, turn off the safety, chamber another round. Turn this off. It is now in a safe condition. Remove the full, the one round short magazine and put an empty magazine in. Unlock the safety and pull it back and have it locked back with the magazine in place. Now, I can let the weapon forward, check the trigger function, see that the hammer moves freely, it's fine, reload a live magazine into it, chamber the round, turn on the safety. Drill is complete. This drill must be done with the ammunition that you carry. Notice the large cavity in this bullet. The purpose of the cavity is to prevent collateral damage. You want it to stop in the first target and leave all of its energy there. So that is why you must do this drill with your live carry ammo. And that concludes the presentation. You notice it didn't take long and uh, doesn't take long to clean up either. And this every two weeks, do this. If your gun fails at all to chamber, uh, to lock, to let the hammer fall easily, it's time to take it apart, clean it, start over and do the drill again until it's complete. But generally, uh, I go weeks and weeks without getting the opportunity to take it out and shoot it. So this is my answer to that. Thank you very much. Have a great day. In part three, we will get more concerned in hand-to-hand -hand tactics and implements. Now, if all else fails, go for the four sensitive areas of the body. But just remember to sing. S-I-N-G. <clears throat> Solo flexes, in step, nose, point! Sing. sing. Not everyone could do that. However, it is in my intention to bring you some new content that you may help decide what you can do if it comes to hand-to-hand. -to -hand. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you again soon. I would like to take a moment to thank our siblings, past, present, and future, that defend the Republic, and those that serve the public. Thank each and every one of you. If you found value in this video, please like and subscribe. Ring the notification bell if you want to know when the next video is published. Please leave your questions and comments below. Y'all come back now, you hear?